welcome to the uh, Idiot Speak podcast number one. Woo! <laughs> uh, today it's Scott and... James. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about uh, the downfall of Silent Hills. Yes, and uh, what's going on with Kojima. Yeah, I'm very curious about that. As I'm sure most of you know now, uh, Kojima Productions seems to be gone, or at least not with Konami anymore, as Konami has been taking all of their logos and his name off of everything. Yeah, slowly but surely. Yeah, what, what was it? The uh, the um, Metal Gear Solid Five uh, Facebook page. I know they took the Kojima Productions Twitter account down and changed it to, was it Konami West? Yeah, and then they were even taking it off of some of the downloads and stuff like that, but they ended up putting it back on some of the stuff. Really? I read. Yeah, like they I, took I, I it down and then they put it back up. But I guess maybe because he owns some of it? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, well, And that's another thing I'm curious about is what does he actually own? Does he own any of the stuff from Ko- Kojima Productions, like when he, if he moves on, can he still use the uh, Fox engine, or does Konami own that? I, I, in my opinion, I would think Konami would own it. Yeah, could, they we, they probably put in the money for it, and yeah, the development and everything. Right. I, I know most times the company that um, puts in the money for the production of things they own. So I'm curious what's going to happen with it. Oh, and while we're talking about this, we're going to burn stuff because, you know, what's better for, than... For our YouTube audience out there, you get a little extra than our SoundCloud listeners. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I I know that Konami has said Metal Gear 5 is still going to continue, which, good for them. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great game. I'm, I'm curious if Kojima actually is still working on it. I know, I, I can't remember her name, one of the voice actresses from Phantom Pain said that he has been fired. So he should probably well, it's it's gone, uh, and I know Silent Hills has been canceled. So he's definitely done after Metal Gear Five. Yeah, but um, which is funny because that they had uh, Konami, and I know it's Konami posting what Kojima supposedly said. So who knows if that's accurate or not? Right. But uh, Konami posted something that said that Kojima said he's a hundred percent there with. Uh, Phantom Pain. Right, right. Which they're going to have to say that because they want the Kojima fans behind this game. Right. So they're like, well, we can't lose these people. Well, and it, the other thing is is that I don't think either one is going to say anything about what's going on until after that game comes out for the main reason that, uh, like you said, that the, they don't want the game to be influenced by who's buying it based on what's there. But they also don't want gag orders in place. I'm sure you know if you're if you're gonna start oh, talking bad definitely. about these people that work for you or that you work for, uh, I think you've got uh, got to worry about who's gonna get some backlash on it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I still think the main reason though is Kojima is just so well known for being behind Metal Gear that um, I don't think the fans would buy Metal Gear that he is not part of and i mean his style just is throughout those games and it's such an irreplaceable style everyone knows what he what he does and how he incorporates random things into his games so i i think they would be cutting their own foot off if they got rid of him right before this game comes out because it's supposed to come out this year isn't it yeah september september Uh, it's either early september or mid-september or something like that but um i know that from everything i've read though that after that i mean they're pretty much cutting ties all together and i don't right now i think that uh she she may be right when she says that uh he's been fired because from what i've read he's not employed by them he may be under contract for a set amount of time true that's very true but uh that doesn't mean he's an employee um I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens after Metal Gear comes out to see, you know, what exactly did happen and, uh, you know, who's to blame? I mean, is it Kojima just wanting to go his separate way because he wants to go his separate way or is it the company wanting him to do something specific and he's saying, no, I don't want to do that? Um, But the other thing, I read a lot about uh, saying that he's kind of in love with uh, Hollywood, which is kind of makes sense that on Silent Hills he partnered with Guillermo del Toro. Right, right. And, um, 
and you can tell like his games play like movies. Yeah, like, the Metal Gear games feel like you're playing a movie. Like it's with a very weird plot, but it's still <laughs> a movie. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to move forward to is I'm more of a Silent Hill fan than Metal Gear. I loved Silent Hill one through three. I never played or even really seen too much around Silent Hill four. Uh, I've watched people play Silent Hill Homecoming and Downpour, which to me was the downfall of Silent Hill <laughs> when they gave those games to the American uh, production company to, to build. And I mean, you they're like, hey, uh, Silent Hill, the movie did all right. Let's make it like that. <laughs> and the games were just nothing like they used to be. It was really sad to see. Yeah. And... I, w- I had very little hope about any new Silent Hill games, and then when I see that Kojima, of all people, partnering with Del Toro, working... Uh, I-, I know Kojima was directing. I believe Del Toro was only writing. I don't know if um, Kojima was going to write as well or not. I don't know. I only read that, like you said, that he was a director. I didn't read right. anything else uh, contrary to that. And, I mean, I, I think that actually had me... I had hope for this new game, and I don't even own a syst- uh, PlayStation right now to even play it, and I would have bought one for it, <laughs> because that's how interested I was in this game. And to hear that that it is just it's been canceled, just and it looks so promising with uh, PT. Yeah. Now uh, PT was an interesting concept because being a, a playable demo that no one knew at first was Silent Hill related. Right. And um, it, it didn't f- seem like a Silent Hill game. I remember when I first saw it, I was kind of unsure if I liked it because like, oh, this is so different from anything Silent Hill like. It's first person. There's, I mean, I know Silent Hill is not known for combat. In fact, it's known for having very poor combat on purpose. Right, but it's it's not, there's no combat. There, there's no, it, it's just you walking around looking at things, solving yeah, you puzzles. Can't even pick stuff up, really. Right, I mean, but, and, and the game looked beautiful thanks to the Fox engine, but um, I, I, I was just very off put by it because I'm like, well, this isn't Silent Hill, but then the more I watched it and the more I... Um, I, I saw of it. I was like, you know, this is it, it's new, but it, it it's good. This is actually really well done. It it's you it, to me. Good horror is making the player do something they don't want to do. Like if it, it, I I've played like the Dead Space games, which are decent action horror games. Yeah. But you don't feel dread. They're like, okay, what's my next objective? I'm gonna go do it. Where you have something like Silent Hill, or I, I in my opinion, the most recent game that has done this is Amnesia, where you don't want to go do the next objective. <laughs> you want to just stay and hide in the closet and not move. And you're probably not even safe there. Right. But then um, th- that's what I thought was actually interesting is PT did that. It did that very well. It made you almost not want to go through that door. You, you would want to run through the door at the bottom of the steps and then stop because what's going to be waiting for me on the other side of this door? So it, it, I, and I was like, that is a good horror game. That's... Yeah, it used build up, which a lot of people don't want to use anymore. It takes too much time, too much effort to, to have this big build up for uh, not necessarily a jump scare. I mean, there's a few jump scares and stuff like that in it, not to say that there isn't, but uh, you know, the, his goal was to be overly creepy, not right. not to uh, it doesn't rely, make you jump. It doesn't rely on the jump scare like so many things do anymore. Yeah, and I I, I like that. That is, the, in my opinion, how horror should be. It should be kind of like the the creeping dread. This you almost are making it worse for yourself. It's not even you're seeing things. It's like you're imagining what's on the other side of this door. What am I going to see? Like, granted, yeah, there are a few jump scares in the game, but they yeah. um, are actually well done. Now, what I'm curious is, will Kojima be allowed to take what he was going to use for Silent Hills, if he had anything, and put it towards something new for a new company that's not Konami? Yeah, and I, I think that's going to be interesting because you... I always can't use the Silent Hills right, uh, right. name because you know, Konami definitely owns that. But... Uh, It'll be interesting to see what Guillermo del Toro, uh, you know, had in that. I mean, it, it, was he invested in that project and now it's gone? Uh, same thing with uh, Kojima is how, how invested in that was he? How much of it did he own? Did he not own? Um, is he going to be able to 
take that game and maybe just came out come out with a game called PT now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Well, or something along that line. I, I mean, obviously PT had the Silent Hill lo- or Silent Hills logo in it, so. Yeah. They probably even own that, but I mean, can he take the ideas he was he was going to use? I don't know how far into it he was into. Um, I mean, obviously he's, work, he's working on Phantom Pain still, but um, what ideas were uh, or how far was he? Like, did, did he have things written down or planned out, and can he still use those? Because I'd love to see what his the continuation of PT from Kojima's perspective because he looked like he had a, or he seemed like he had a plan for that because I mean the, the narration at the end of the game when you beat it with, with that voice talking to you in the black screen and he's yeah, it's distra- slowly, it slowly becomes a recording to an actual person yeah yeah I mean yeah. what was he going to do with that because I was interested in what he was going to do with this story I mean it, it was it sounded interesting and new and like it was going to bring life back to the in my opinion dead Silent Hill series and I, I know I know I saw that Konami said that they want to continue Silent Hill and why wouldn't they I mean that's one it's been of the, a big franchise for them yeah and they don't have many left and the fact that they've canceled this one kind of is Konami <sighs> going to be sticking around much longer I mean they have Metal Gear but why would you cancel a game like like Silent Hills when you've got so much t- uh, press behind it, like all these people were so excited about it. PT won, I believe, at least two yeah. awards. It's like horror game of the year, or horror, something for, like that. For a teaser, <laughs> it was a teaser, and it won a game of the horror game of the year. I mean, come on, you you had something great, and you're going to just throw it away. Now, now, what would be interesting is if they kept uh, Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro on. Could they make it a movie? Could they could they turn around and go, all right, we've got this great game that plays along with it that leads you up to it to give you some background on this movie that we're going to make, but because we're not doing a game anymore, that takes Kojima out of it, and now it's just the people that we had on it anyway wow. putting it into a movie. That's interesting. I hadn't even thought of that. That would be interesting to do because they could... That, they could... I, and I, I know... Uh, Konami has pulled PT from the PlayStation Store. Can you imagine they re-release it the exact same, only at the very end when they're announcing the credits, <laughs> they, the, Kojima's name's gone and the Silent Hills logo is gone, and it has a new logo uh, of what this is going to be. Yeah. Because if, if they own the rights, they could potentially do that, and all of a sudden, like it leads instead of to a game, it to a movie. It's a playable teaser that turns in, into the movie. Into the movie. It's, it's the preview for the movie. That basically. would be interesting. But and the question is, would, <laughs> would you go see it? If knowing what you've seen if, in PT, would you take that and go see a movie based on that? If Del Toro, if Del Toro was behind it. Norman Reedus does as an actor, he's a good actor. I say to me, he was not a big deal for the game because I mean, cool, you're playing as Norman Reedus. I don't right. care. I mean, it's not really, it's, it, it's not that huge a deal for me. I was more interested in the writing and the directing, but it, his acting is good. I mean, I could, I would see a movie with Norman Reedus being directed by uh, Gramella del Toro. I'd be curious to who would write it, but yeah, um, yeah but I oh, see that would be another thing. I mean, if Kojima already has this script right. for a game. Does Konami own that script? Yeah, I, that's I don't know. If, if it was written under their roof, is it theirs? <laughs> well, usually, that's the way it works. If it was written f- for their thing, even if it's not finished, they get to use it because it was made for them. They they paid you to make this thing. I mean. That's why I, I don't so know do you, how do far you, things went. That, 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 that's you, that's the the big thing on this is how far did things go? How far was he done, or how much did he have done? And I don't know. I I because because then basically all you're doing is you don't have to remove his name from anything, uh, and you're just paying him as a writer. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, if it's just a, a movie, you've already paid for him to write this thing. Uh, now, I mean, obviously, depending on what the contract states, the contract states, oh, it's always, you know, for game use only or something weird like that, I guess you got to kind of deal with that. But uh, if they've paid for him just to write a script and haven't been so succinct on exactly what it can and can't be used for, then uh, I, I guess you just got to go with it. 
but it, the Fox engine is another thing that uh, the, the game looked amazing, and I'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see if Kojima's allowed to use that, or if that's a, a Konami thing as well. Um, kind of like you were talking about before, because the, the PT looked damn good. Yeah, <laughs> damn it, good. It, it, I, I love how when it came out, they're trying to say, "Oh yeah, we're a uh, uh, the small indie studio," mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you you turn it on and you walk in, and it's this beautiful looking hallway and you're just like what indie studio made this <laughs> <laughs> and lies all yeah. lies <laughs> but, but could you imagine just let, let's let, let's just play pretend here and go to a world where kojima actually gets to make a silent hill game right i mean as, as you know from the metal gear se- metal gear series how interactive he liked to be with his games and like I always go back to the uh, Psycho Mantis fight where you're fighting him and you have to unplug your controller and plug it into the other ports. Can you imagine doing this in a horror game? Like in Amnesia let, 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 let's just say that it, Silent Hills was going to be like PT, like it was going to follow yeah. that same kind of gameplay and it's Amnesia-ish where you don't fight, you're actually just trying to solve puzzles and hide from Things, yeah, that are going to kill you. <laughs> but somehow they're able to like make it interactive in some way. I I know they were going to put it on, I believe on on PS4, and I know they have the uh, the touchpad on the PS4 thing. So I mean, yeah. maybe you have to like, I, 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 maybe you have to have the microphone plugged in. If you make noise, the monsters can track you where you are. Yeah. And and if you don't have the microphone plugged in, they auto track to where you are. So you have to. You have to have it in, and you have to be quiet while you play. Or, or even creepier, you have to sing a specific song or something. You know, like <laughs> sing "Mary Had a Little Lamb" to, in to order lull to, to, to lull them yeah, to sleep yeah. or something. <laughs> like it's super creepy. Uh, yeah, that would be uh, very interesting to see how they use that same type of technology in a uh, and just his ideas. Yeah, I, I mean, can you imagine somehow like you have to enter your name into the game, and it will talk to you. Yeah. Like, so, so do you think? he's going to go off on his own or do you think he's going to end up somewhere i i've thought about is he going to end up at a, a different studio like i don't even know who and just work for them or is he going to be in my opinion kind of like platinum games and he'll make games for whoever right and um i i at first was figuring he'd probably end up somewhere and stay with them but the more i've thought about it I think he'll probably, if, if he's smart, he he would do kind of a Paul Platinum game, and it would just be Kojima Productions. They would make games for whoever, right? And I would be probably more into that. I think that would be the better way to go. He would have more control over what he was doing. Not that he didn't at Konami, because his games were good, but they were weird. <laughs> But in a good way. But could you imagine, you know, playing, uh, you know, I don't even know what kind of game, but like say he went to, uh, this is way out there, Nintendo or something, and, and yeah. uh, you know, started making a game for them. He, he would already have the backing and everything that he needed going to another company, whereas if he goes off on his own, you know, he's got to make this basically his own game, um, and it's got to be something that works, and it's got to be something that he can put all his money and all this other stuff in, and we just don't know if he has that resources out on his own. Um, that is true. So, I, I mean, the only thing is he's been doing this for a while. I mean, he has been making games, I believe, since the late 80s. I, say, I know he's 51, I think is what I read. Which, by the way, he looks like he's 24. I know. <laughs> I, I saw that earlier. It's like, he's 51? But um, I, I want to bl- say that he did the first Metal Gear game in the late 80s and has been making games since. And I don't think, um, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but I don't believe that Metal Gear have ever done poorly. I don't think so. I mean, they, ever since the first one, they've had a pretty loyal following. I mean, uh, enough so that it's been ported over into Smash Brothers and, and yeah. everything else. I mean, I don't think it's ever done poor. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about like all the spinoff games and whatnot, but I don't believe there has been a negatively received Metal Gear game. I know, like... Um, Oh, I, I can't even think of the name of the the, the Metal Gear game. Was, was it? It was, it was one where you played as uh, Raiden, and it was it was it was actually one of the few Metal Gear games that was produced by Platinum Games. I want to say Uprising or Vengeance. I can't remember which. I, I, obviously, that one was done by Platinum Games, and it, it felt more like a Platinum game. It felt more like a Bayonetta, where you it was a character action game. Yeah. But it, <laughs> button mashing. It, button mashing, <laughs> but it was good. It was it was it was a an amazing Platinum Games 
control game with a, a Metal Gear story. So it was like right. the perfect combination of the two. And I, I think some fans were kind of like confused by it, but it, I think it still ended up doing well. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I could see him going off and doing that, being kind of his own company, making games for whoever. I would love to see like Kojima doing, let's say, the next Metroid game. <laughs> I would love to see something like that. That would be extremely dark. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be like... dark. It would be weird. <laughs> Perfect for Metro. <laughs> yeah. But, um... I wonder who owns Dead Space right now. <laughs> oh, that's Visceral Games. Visceral. And, and which is owned by EA. So we're, we'll probably never see another Dead Space game. <laughs> again. Because I believe the third Dead Space did very poorly, which it looked bad in my opinion. I know it got mixed reviews, but it just... They took a semi-decent horror series and turned it into a co-op action adventure series. Yeah. Um, like, I love Dead Space 2. I actually like Dead Space 2 more than Dead Space 1. Dead Space 2, it was a bit more of an action game than Dead Space 1, but it was well done. It was still disturbing, but you didn't have, like, the dread that you had in Dead Space 1. I mean, it, it had moments. There, there, were, there were some decent creepy moments but it was more of a late resident evil style action game you you know what i would love to see kojima do and maybe this is just me talking but like an aliens game that would be cool that would be an excellent uh option for him because i feel like we need a super creepy i mean i know they just came out with that one isolation isolation that that one was good good. but that that was what the one in many that have actually (laughs) been good i mean don't even get me started on colonial marines yeah that's uh we won't talk about that one. God. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, he's got to find his niche and find somebody that's going to pay him to do that same thing, which I don't think he's going to have a problem with. Um, but, it, again, it's going to go back to why did he leave or why did he was he forced to leave? Right. Uh, Konami, I mean, was it because he couldn't agree with them or was it because they wanted you know it's it's all going to come back down to that because it it may be that he was so unable to work with them that no big corporation is going to want to deal with him anymore and he may not have a choice but to be out on his own um but i mean his track record people are probably going to take risks on (laughs) it i I would think so i mean like i said i i no one knows right now what happened between them what what caused this um split but it, it's just very, it just it caught me by surprise. Like I, I heard all this stuff a while back about the taking the logo and the name off of things. I'm like, oh, they're just restructuring. Yeah, which is what they they tried to cover it up right. as. I'm like, like, oh, we need to, we, Konami needs to be the front, not I, I mean, Kojima. I, I had this like feeling deep down, like something's wrong. But no, that's just restructuring. And and then I, w- w- it was Monday, I believe they they finally came out and said. And actually, I, I read well. Meryl de Toro was at a uh, Comic Con type festival and said, "Yeah, Silent Hills isn't happening." And then Norman Reedus came out and said, "Yeah, Silent Hills isn't happening." And then the next day, Konami's like, "Yeah, it's not happening." <laughs> and I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I was literally just in shock that this game that was announced not even a year ago, yeah, and was already extremely hyped by a lot of people, is done. Yeah, you would think. They would either want to uh, pick it back up somehow or something, but to just cancel it flat out is just weird to me. Well, In, unless they had a big contract with him, and the only way to get out of it is to go, nope, we're scrapping the whole friggin' thing. Right. Because, I mean, like I said, they they have said that um, they do want to continue the Silent Hill series. Yeah. But... Apparently not that way. Not Yeah. <laughs> which is just... I, I, I cannot take it if we're going to get another homecoming or downpour style game yeah and the only thing that would kind of uh irk me about kojima is if the reason that he is no longer on this and stuff is let's say that they started to do the restructuring and take his kojima productions logo off of stuff and he got hurt (laughs) by that and started fighting back against them and then that's why they started doing that. I mean, I don't if, know. If, if that's the basis for the whole thing, then I gotta lose faith in Kojima a little bit because that's pride talking. Yeah, no, I I don't think he would. I, to me, from the way this sounds now, is 
th- he was let go or fired or his contract was up or whatever the the deal was. So and he either decided not to keep going or he, he was fired. That's why they start taking the things off. I, I it kind of is almost clear to me now that that's what happened. Yeah. I, I can't. I, I mean, you could be right. It could be an ego thing. I just I I doubt it. I doubt that's what it is. I'm sure we'll find out middle of September, right after the game comes out. Somebody's somebody will open their mouth. Oh, yeah. between now and then for sure. I, I'm sure there has to be some kind of a non-disclosure agreement between. Mm-hmm. But the fact that the one voice actress has already said, that, yeah, he was fired. Um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's gonna come out. Yeah, it'll be definitely like you said, be interesting to see uh, exactly what happens, um, how it plays out, and. Uh, not necessarily who was to blame, but uh, who we picture who's at fault. Yeah. Or who we think is at fault. Now, here's another question for you. Do you think this will affect the sales of Metal Gear 5? No, because uh, hardcore gamers are going to look at it and go, okay, well, this one's still made by all the same people that have always made it. Now, will it affect the one after that? Sure, Maybe. But this one, I don't think you're going to see any effect because the people that have always played Metal Gear Solid will look at it and say, okay, well, it's still still the same. It's just a continuation from what we've been playing. We're going to keep playing it. Um, now, what happens if Kojima goes out and makes a Metal Gear Solid type of game yeah. to compete with... <laughs> that would be a little uh, plastic but, cog liquid. Yeah, <laughs> you you would think though that that that's got to be built into his uh, uh, contracts and stuff too. Like you can't go out and do a similar game uh, or work for a competitor, which at that point he would be a competitor. Oh yeah. So he may not even be able to release anything for a few years based on the competitive clause in a contract. Right. Now, I mean, to me, that is kind of similar. Um, to, I can't, I can't, I cannot remember the guy's name. The 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 man who created Mega Man. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, as we all know, Capcom owns Mega Man and has decided basically to not do anything with Mega Man. Boo. Yeah, I mean, even on his what was it the twenty fifth anniversary of Mega Man? Uh, they released a fan made game. Yeah, ten. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it was it was Mega Man Cross Street Fighter. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it, it was Mega Man style game with Street Fighter bosses. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I mean, Nintendo cares more about Mega Man than Capcom. So the guy who created Mega Man, he's gone off and made his own game called, I believe, Mighty Force Nine. Which looks like a Mega Man game, <laughs> and it's supposed to play just like a Mega Man game, and maybe Kojima could do something like that. Yeah, he, he could make a Metal Gear game without the title Metal Gear and without the same characters, but very similar. Yeah, and I like you, you hide in a round box instead of a uh, square box. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can just see that now. Yeah. It's like, it's just a spoof off of it. He wears his eye patch on the other see, eye. That would be or... perfect. <laughs> that this would be perfect. It would, it would be um, a spoof of Metal Gear, which Metal Gear is already a spoof of so many things yeah. anyway. <laughs> Have him make a spoof of Metal Gear. And, and it's just like, instead of being an actual really good spy, yeah. he's just, it's, it's, it's uh, Jack Barton from... Uh, um, big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Can't do a thing right. It's Be- like Archer. He, he gets the job done, but it's kind of uh, a roundabout way of doing it. But that's even perfect because he they named Snake from Metal Gear after Snake uh, Pliskin from, <laughs> from Escape from New York. So yeah. use a different Kurt Russell character and be the exact opposite. <laughs> Instead of being this guy who's good at what he does, a complete bumbling idiot who doesn't realize that he's bad at what he does. Yeah, he thinks he's the greatest. He's the best spy in the world, and yet he gets caught in every single mission because he doesn't know what he's doing. He hides in boxes where his legs stick out and stuff, you know. Can't actually hide from anyone. He wears an eye patch over an eye that works perfectly fine. (laughs) Just completely spoof the thing. I I, I mean, if you're going to get sued over something, you might as well make it just epic. I I would (laughs) buy that game. (laughs) Ugh. But I think we are out of time, so this brings us to the end of the podcast. 
Um, you can catch us on our YouTube channel, uh, Idiots at Play, and this podcast and all of our others will be up on our SoundCloud, which is uh, Idiot Speak Show. And we are going to uh, try to get these up on iTunes. Uh, we'll let you know when that happens. And thank you for tuning in. Bye. See ya.